isn't over yet, but I think it's far enough along for me to have a pretty good sense of how this year's garden fared compared to last year's garden. So today I thought I'd take a look at some of the major crops that we grow and talk about which crops did better this year, which ones did worse, and which ones did about the same. Let's start with this year's winners. All of our fruit crops did better this year than last year, including our strawberries, yellow raspberries, and grapes. But nothing in the entire garden has beat out last year's competition like our blackberries. The yield has been amazing. We've been picking blackberries every day for weeks. We've frozen them. We've made several pies and cobblers. We've made a couple batches of blackberry ice cream and they just keep on coming. Another big winner this year has been our cherry tomatoes. Though this year's crop ripened late because of the cool, wet conditions, it had significantly outproduced last year's crop. Last year I planted the cherry tomatoes too close to other vertical crops, and they ended up being shaded out. And I'm sure the extreme heat and drought conditions last summer didn't help either. Thanks to the cold, wet weather this spring and early summer, I had to replant our string beans three times to get them started. But my persistence paid off, and we have a much better crop this year than last year. Our Malabar spinach has also done much better this year than last year. Most likely because of placement in the yard, and the fact that it's not being shaded out by other vertical plants. And last but not least, our potato crop. It was not only better than last year's crop, it was the best we've ever had. Now let's move on to the crops that did not do as well this year. I hate to put my kale and collard greens in this category because they did very well this year. But last year's crop was spectacular. Here are some photos of last year's crop. Our peppers were also a disappointment this year. Though these jalapenos are doing great, a number of our pepper plants died off as a result of the cold and wet conditions this spring and early summer. But when it comes to failures, the peppers are no match for this year's winter squash. This is what our winter squash plants looked like last year, with acorns and butternuts on the left and kushas on the right. They towered over the yard. At this time last year, all the winter squash were well on their way to maturity, including the acorn, the butternut, and the kushaw. And the harvest in October looked like this. Unfortunately, this year is a different story. Even before this powdery mildew devastated these squash plants, it was clear that we weren't going to have much of a winter squash harvest. The butternut squash didn't make it. This is our sole acorn squash. And the only kushaw is smaller than my index finger. These squash plants just didn't get enough sun to produce their fruit, and all the rain contributed to the powdery mildew, despite repeated applications of water and baking soda. And that leads us to our final draw category. Fortunately, everything else that we grew both this year and last did quite well both years. The zucchini, the garlic, the Swiss chard, and more. When all is said and done, I am very happy with this year's harvest. And I'd say it's comparable or slightly better than last year's, despite some very unusual weather. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.